Hello one and all and welcome to this texturing tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial I will show you the basics of updating textures for old models like this. This is circa 2006, I think. Uh, not 100% sure, but uh, I'm just going to show you how to update it from what it looks like now to something like this. Much cleaner, crisper lines. It looks like a, like a real texture even though the model is still, I mean, same polygon count as it was. So um, what you're going to need in order to do this is a an image manipulation software called paint.net. Um, I'm just going to open it up here. So this is the original this is the original texture um, what you see here. Now what you're going to need to do is change the resolution of this texture to match the UV texture and then export the UV. I'll go ahead and show you how to do that right now. Uh, when you go into UV editing on this model, select all the UVs that you're interested in. Normally that would just be on one material or another. I'm um, not going to go through how to do the majority of stuff in Blender. I'm going to assume you already have a basic idea of what UV mapping is and kind of how to do it. Uh, if not, you can look up another tutorial. Uh, you just select that, go to UV, export UV layout, save that somewhere. Um, and then you just want to create another layer in paint.net. Now, most of what you're going to be doing uh, is going to be working in layers. You've got your basic background layer right here in the lower right-hand corner. Um, and then you can add new layers, uh, toggle their visibility. You can do a whole lot of cool stuff with layers. Um, so what you're going to want to do is get yourself a UV map like this. And then get yourself uh, like a new image over here. Um, and then you're just going to use the original image as a guide, and the UV is kind of like a, a ruler, basically. So a lot of what you're going to do is just getting images off the web. For example, for these headlights, as you can see here, I just got a um, headlight off of the internet, and then you use the circle select tool uh, to select it, copy it, paste it over here. Uh, I've got different layers for everything, so for the parts of the image that needed to be black, um, I just set up a layer for that. Parts of the image that had um, decals, uh, I set up a layer for that. Everything's on its own separate layer, everything kind of filters down. If your layers aren't in the correct order, things won't show up properly. Um, so layers work on a hierarchy basis. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that. Um, but yeah, basically what you do is you just trace the original image. Uh, if it's something like a Ferrari, uh, and there's a lot of assets that you can find online, um, then you won't be doing a whole lot of like um, what I call line tracing, which is when you use the line tool to trace the shape of a thing Uh, you can just copy and paste different shapes using the UV mesh as a guide uh, because you can use what's called a magic wand here to select multiple different parts of a mesh. Say, for example, you wanted to put a uh, little flame decal on the side. That's what you do. Um, and then you could use a lasso select here. Hold control. And then just select that. And then add like flames or something. And then, you know, toggle the visibility of the layer, flatten it, control F, and then save it and open it directly in Blender. And that's really all there is to it. Um, just going through and finding uh, the textures that need to be updated uh, and then just switching them out using the UV map over here. Uh, if you've got any more questions or if you want any uh, further clarification, uh, then just leave a comment in the video below. Sorry, this was kind of a short one, um, but I just felt that it could theoretically be uh, helpful to anybody who was working on like a uh, texture for a model or wanted to update textures for like an old model they ripped or something like that. Anyways, um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.